Cannibal Corpse, written by Ashrijit Basu. Oh ho, bol ho, Pashapati ho. Kills, kills, kill. The chilling war cry reverberates through the desolate expanse of Gangaridai, shrouding the land in an aura of primal brutality. The mercenaries, consumed by an unhinged fervor, unleash their feral instincts, channeling the spirit of death metal as they prepare to descend into the depths of savagery. Their enigmatic leader, Sakehel, stands at the forefront, his commanding presence a beacon of dread. His antario, adorned with sinister stone carvings, symbolizes the carnage that lies in wait. With eyes gleaming like malevolent stars, he addresses his disciples, his voice laced with a mix of anticipation and sadistic pleasure. Fellow brethren, tonight we embark on a journey of bloodlust, Sakehel's voice drips with twisted delight. Your prowess as formidable warriors is known far and wide. You have snuffed out the lives of world leaders, spilled blood in the Persian Gulf, and reveled in the chaos of naval clashes in the Greek islands. But tonight, our quarry transcends mere mortals. It is an unholy entity, its presence heralded by the reek of rotting fish. You have honed your skills on battlefields drenched in the crimson essence of fallen foes. Now, we confront a supernatural force, an abomination beyond mortal comprehension. A surge of adrenaline courses through the assembled warriors as they absorb Sakehel's words, their bloodlust fueled by the promise of a gruesome reward. They yearn to embrace the darkness, to unleash their fury upon a creature that defies reason and feasts upon human suffering. Our mission is clear, Sakehel's voice resonates with wicked determination. We shall unshackle these tormented souls from the clutches of Samsara, casting them into the abyss of Valhalla. The warrior among you who claims victory shall be rewarded with a treasure that would make even the gods tremble, half a million gold gangetic coins. The mercenaries, their eyes gleaming with a combination of greed and bloodlust, let loose an unholy chorus of war cries, a cacophony that echoes through the unforgiving night. The sound reverberates, intertwining with the darkness, as if summoning a malevolent force from the depths of the underworld. The mercenaries, their eyes gleaming with a combination of greed and bloodlust, let loose an unholy chorus of war cries, a cacophony that echoes through the unforgiving night. With the war cry still echoing in the air, Sakehel raises his arm, pointing toward the ominous depths of the foreboding jungle. Venture forth, my brethren, into the heart of that Stygian abyss. Seek out the creature that prowls within, driven by an insatiable hunger for the macabre. It relishes in the taste of spilled blood, leaving naught but lifeless husks in its wake. A primal surge of adrenaline surges through the mercenaries' veins as they ready themselves for the impending clash with the unknown. The air crackles with the electric anticipation of savagery, as warriors clad in darkness step into the abyss, their souls aflame with a desire to conquer the night and claim victory over the diabolical presence that awaits. In the realm of Samsara, where desires intertwine with the mortal and supernatural, a twisted game unfolds. It is a place where desires are put to the test, and only those who are willing to stake everything have a chance at attaining their heart's deepest longings. Bivuti, the youngest and seemingly weakest among the mercenaries, races through the treacherous jungle. His upper body remains bare, accentuating his muscular physique, while a tautly wrapped garment sways seductively around his waistline. With every stride, his powerful legs propel him forward, although he can't match the speed of his fellow soldiers. Pausing to catch his breath, he inhales deeply, filling his lungs with the oxygen necessary to sustain his exertions. Determined, he resumes his frantic pace, a curved dagger clutched firmly in his hand, ready to clear his path by severing obstructing branches. The echoing clamor of his comrades reverberates through the dense foliage, their unified shouts and howls permeating the air like tormented souls trapped in the depths of hell. As Bivuti ventures deeper into the labyrinthine jungle, a ghastly figure emerges from the shadows. The moonlight reveals a menacing presence wielding an axe, blood dripping from his mouth. Bivuti's astonishment is palpable as he recognizes Rick, another member of their fraternity. What are you doing here, Batra? Let us press on and confront the beast, Bivuti urges, his voice laced with urgency. Rick, his tone saturated with an otherworldly resonance, responds, 
I shall find it in due time. Perplexed, Bivuti observes the blood staining Rick's mouth and inquires about his encounter in the depths of the jungle. I have already claimed the lives of two soldiers, and now I shall end you, Rick states matter of factly, a wicked glint in his eyes. Bivuti's disbelief turns to horror. How could you kill your own Vratas? We are mercenaries, bound by a code of honor. We are meant to hunt our prey, not each other. Rick bursts into malevolent laughter. You are naive, my dear Bivuti. This bounty, worth half a million, is a game where only one can emerge victorious. Brotherhood means nothing. Let me be the one to end you. Bivuti is shaken to his core, struggling to reconcile the revelation with his understanding of their fraternity. Mercenaries they may be, but there were sacred tenets they abided by, rules that governed their actions. They were not supposed to turn against one another. You are nothing but a treacherous fool. Bivuti retorts, his voice tinged with righteous anger. You betray your own kin, your own comrades. We are warriors, but we fight with purpose, not for base desires. Rick continues his callous laughter, closing in on Bivuti with a menacing swing of his axe. Instinctively, Bivuti takes a step back, his body bending to avoid the deadly blow. Seizing the opportunity, he swiftly maneuvers his dagger, aiming to strike at Rick's right leg. Caught off guard, Rick howls in pain as the dagger finds its mark. Reacting swiftly, Rick regains his composure, poised to retaliate against Bivuti's defiance. Despite his valiant efforts, Bivuti's speed fails him this time, unable to evade Rick's merciless strike. The cruel impact of the axe sends shockwaves of agony through Bivuti's left arm, causing him to crumple to the unforgiving ground. 3. Before the final strike of Rick's axe, a flash of steel cut through the air, severing his head from his body. Bivuti watched in disbelief as Rick's lifeless head hit the ground, blood spurring from his decapitated form. As the crimson liquid splattered across the earth, some of it landed on Bivuti's face, a macabre reminder of the brutal reality of their existence. As Bivuti wiped the blood from his eyes, he saw a figure emerge from the shadows, a woman holding a gleaming card. Her face bore the marks of battle, and her hair was pulled back tightly into a bun. Her attire was practical, with her breasts firmly bound and a silken anterio accentuating her curvaceous waistline, drawing attention to her ample buttocks. Bivuti stood before her, his head spinning from the previous combat. He spat blood onto the soil and locked eyes with the mysterious woman. Who are you? You are not one of our mercenaries. Explain yourself, he demanded. The woman smiled mischievously, her eyes filled with an air of amusement. I am the one who saved your life, and yet you question me without a hint of gratitude. How uncouth! Bivuti's senses heightened as he caught a whiff of an unfamiliar scent, a putrid odor of rotting fish. His instincts told him that the supernatural being they were after was near. He scanned his surroundings, alert to any signs of danger. The night was filled with the sounds of nocturnal creatures, but nothing more. Are you searching for something or someone? The woman asked her tone laced with intrigue. Bivuti stood his ground and replied, this place is dangerous. Whoever you are, you should leave. The woman's tone grew more cryptic as she responded, don't worry about me. If this place is dangerous, it is because of me. Baffled by her words, Bivuti pressed, what do you mean? I mean, I am the danger, she stated with an air of confidence. Suddenly, her gaze bore into Bivuti's soul, causing him to lose his sense of stability. It felt as if the ground beneath him had vanished, and her dilated pupils threatened to consume him whole. Pain seared through his arms, and the bleeding intensified, but he refused to succumb. What are you doing to me? Are you the being we're here to kill? She erupted in laughter, her voice echoing in the eerie silence. Yes, I am the Dakini you were meant to eliminate tonight. Bivuti knew he couldn't allow himself to be ensnared by her sinister magic. He couldn't engage in a futile dialogue that would only weaken his mind and lead to hallucinations. Without hesitation, he made his move, swiftly striking her neck with his curved dagger. Blood spilled from her wound, but to his dismay, her body regenerated, and her laughter filled the air once more. You poor souls! 
I saved your lives, yet you repay me with betrayal and selfishness, she taunted. Vivu T may not have possessed the same speed or skill as his comrades, but he understood his role in this lethal trade. He knew the importance of righteousness amidst the shadows of his profession, where sin became a currency that required the firm hand of justice. He fortified his mind against her manipulations, focusing on his task at hand. In a sudden transformation, the woman's figure grew larger, her form expanding beyond normal proportions. Towering before him, she appeared as a colossal entity, her size matching her malevolence. Vivu T seized the opportunity, identifying her vulnerability in the sacral chakra, located at her navel. With a clear mind and unwavering determination, he swiftly closed the distance between them. Years of training and experience guided his hand as he drove his dagger deep into her exposed chakra. A surge of energy coursed through her body, disrupting the source of her degenerative powers. The once formidable woman now reduced to a lifeless corpse before Bibuti's victorious gaze. With a mix of relief and triumph, he had not only defeated the supernatural being but also released her from the cycle of samsara. Breathing heavily, Bibuti wiped the sweat from his brow and surveyed the desolate surroundings. The air was thick with the scent of blood and the remnants of the battle that had unfolded. The eerie silence of the night seemed to echo his accomplishment, as if the very earth acknowledged his victory. As the adrenaline subsided, Bibuti became acutely aware of the weight of his actions. The bounty he had pursued was finally his, but it came at a cost. His fellow mercenaries had fallen, and the consequences of their ruthless pursuit of power loomed heavily in his mind. He knelt down beside the lifeless body, his thoughts consumed by introspection. The boundaries between right and wrong, good and evil, had blurred in this merciless realm. He had fought not only for the bounty but also to preserve the remnants of honor within his dark profession. With a heavy heart, Bibuti rose to his feet, leaving behind the lifeless husk of the once dangerous Dakini. The path back to his comrades awaited him, fraught with uncertainty and the lingering shadows of their trade. As he walked, he vowed to carry the weight of his choices and strive for redemption amidst the chaos of Gangaridai. The night remained shrouded in darkness, and the whispers of the ancient civilization carried on the wind.